The KTL Naxtra passenger EV battery is the world's first mass-produced sodium-ion EV battery. He walked through the halls of the Shanghai Auto Show with the same excitement he felt every year, but this time, something felt different. The show was packed with concept cars, luxury EVs, futuristic interiors and experimental mobility designs, yet among all of it, one machine immediately grabbed his attention. It was an electric vertical takeoff aircraft, an EV tall with a claimed endurance of about 1 hour and 20 minutes and a range of around 250 kilometers. The idea of a small aircraft lifting off vertically and traveling that far on electric power alone felt like a look into the next decade. As impressive as that aircraft was, he quickly realized it was not the highlight of the show. The true shock came from three major battery announcements from CATL that he believed would shift the entire automotive landscape. He had been creating technology content for years, but this moment felt special. CATL had unveiled the world's first mass-produced sodium-ion battery called Naxtra, a dual chemistry battery platform called Freevoy, and the second generation of their ultra-fast charging Shengsing battery. He took a deep breath, ready to break each one down and see how they connected. As he spoke, he made it clear that Cattle had partnered with him for access, but the opinions and excitement were fully his own. He explained that since the invention of rechargeable batteries, lithium had been at the center of everything. Lithium sat at the top row of the periodic table as the lightest alkali metal, which made it ideal for batteries, but lithium came with problems. It was not abundant. And, as the world moved toward hundreds of millions of electric vehicles, the supply chain could become strained. Prices of lithium had already fluctuated wildly, raising concerns for long-term cost stability. That was why CATL had spent years developing something that did not rely on lithium at all. Their sodium-ion battery replaced lithium with sodium, the next lightest alkali metal on the periodic table. Sodium had several advantages, but the biggest was that it was far more abundant. He pointed out that sodium was over a thousand times more plentiful than lithium in the Earth's crust, meaning that as production scaled up, sodium-ion batteries could massively reduce costs and help lower EV prices. The second major advantage was cold temperature performance. To show this, CATL demonstrated a sodium-ion battery operating at around minus 40 degrees Celsius. Even in that extreme cold, the battery powered a kettle, lights and other devices. The point was clear. Lithium-ion cells struggled in deep cold without heating elements to keep the chemistry active, while sodium-ion batteries continued to operate with minimal loss. For countries with harsh winters, this could be transformative. However, sodium ion chemistry also had drawbacks. It lagged in energy density. That meant heavier packs for the same range, or, you know, shorter ranges for the same weight. This trade off was the reason sodium ion batteries had not replaced lithium ion across the board. But this was also where KATL's second announcement came in. He explained that engineering was always about balancing pros and cons. Different battery chemistries behaved like different materials in wiring, copper was the best overall balance, aluminum was cheaper with reasonable performance, gold was excellent but honestly, just too costly. In the same way, lithium iron phosphate offered long cycle life and safety but lower energy density, while nickel cobalt manganese offered efficiency and range but cost more and degraded faster. Automakers had always been forced to choose one over the other. That choice determined the vehicle's behavior, charge rate, and overall performance. KTL's Freevoid dual power battery system removed the need for that single choice limitation. For the first time, two different chemistries were placed in the same pack. Sodium ion cells could handle fast charging, safety, and low temperatures. Lithium iron phosphate cells could handle energy density and longer range. When combined in one architecture, the pack delivered the advantages of both. There was no perfect chemistry, but with Freevoy, designers could mix attributes to create a balanced system. This flexibility could honestly reshape the way automakers design future EVs.
He then moved to the third announcement, one that would likely excite every EV owner who had ever waited too long at a charging station. Cattle introduced the second generation of the Shengxing battery, and it called it the world's fastest charging battery. It reached charging speeds up to 12C and could sustain around 6C. Using his own 100 kilowatt hour EV as an example, 12C would represent 1,200 kilowatts or 1.2 megawatts of power flowing into the pack. His current vehicle maxed out at 250 kilowatts, so this was nearly five times faster. That meant recharging over 500 kilometers of range in just five minutes. At that speed, charging an EV became as quick as filling a gasoline tank, possibly even faster. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below, it helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. The numbers became even more shocking, 75 kilometers of range could be added in just 30 seconds. That translated to roughly 2.5 kilometers of range per second. He also explained that cold temperatures usually hurt fast charging. Yet even at minus 10 degrees Celsius, the Shengxing battery could charge from 5 to 80 percent in around 15 minutes. These speeds were possible because KTL adjusted not only the chemistry, but also the internal architecture of the battery. The battery used a super-crystalline graphite anode. It formed a more uniform structure that allowed ions to move faster. Next was an enhanced electrolyte formulation that maintained stable reactions even under extreme charging currents. The multipath electronic flow design allowed electricity to move across the battery more evenly, reducing hot spots. Finally, the cathode used advanced conductive materials that sustained high current without excessive heat. He then explained that cattle's breakthroughs did not stop at cell design. Pack thermal management was equally important. Cattle displayed an extruded view of one of their battery packs, showing a long cooling ribbon running between every row of cells. Instead of cooling from below, the liquid coolant passed across the entire surface area of the cells, removing heat much more effectively. This was critical because the heat generated during 12C charging was enormous. Without advanced cooling, the battery would degrade quickly or shut down. Cattle's approach allowed the pack to maintain high speeds safely. CATL also offered complete modular platforms that integrated their cell-to-chassis battery architecture. In these platforms, the battery pack itself formed part of the vehicle structure. They even included axial flux motors, inverters, and electronics. He realized KTL was no longer just a supplier of cells, but a company offering entire EV foundations that automakers could build upon. One of the most surprising things he saw at the show was Cattail's battery swapping demonstration. The idea of pulling into a station, having the pack drop from the bottom of the car, and a fully charged one sliding back in, all in around 100 seconds, felt futuristic. But KTL's involvement changed everything. Car companies had attempted swapping before, but every brand used its own shape and size, preventing any real standard from forming. KTL, however, built one of every three EV batteries on Earth. If any company had the power to standardize swapping across brands, it was them. He learned that the swap station held 14 battery packs. The station only needed to keep those packs charged faster than the rate of incoming cars. He imagined a future where car buyers could purchase vehicles without batteries and instead subscribe to a swapping network. That would remove concerns about degradation, replacement costs, and long-term performance. He also learned that CATL had expanded into battery recycling. They projected that by the early 2040s, half of all new battery production would rely on recycled material. The company claimed it could recover over 99% of the nickel, cobalt, and manganese, and about 91% of the lithium from old packs. Sodium recovery would improve once sodium ion systems reached large-scale adoption. The full circular life cycle of a battery, from creation to use to reuse, had become a core focus. As he wrapped up the day, he felt genuinely impressed. Sodium ion batteries promised to lower costs. The dual chemistry system promised flexibility. The ultra fast charging battery promised convenience. CATL seemed to be addressing every major concern EV owners had voiced over the years. He thanked them for their time, insights, and demonstrations. He closed by saying he hoped to tour their factories and witness a real battery swap in person. 
The Shanghai experience was unforgettable, he signed off with the same excitement he felt at the beginning, knowing that these developments could change the EV industry.